Hello, I'm Richard Stammers. I'm the Visual Effects Supervisor on Prometheus. My first brief from the client was really based on reading the script and seeing the concept work that had been done prior to pre-production and it was clear that we needed to construct a planet surface that we could explore in some detail. The first thing I saw visually of the project was all the concept work that a small team of designers and concept artists had been working on for several months before my involvement. There was no way that any of this would exist practically in any form enough for, for us to shoot but Ridley definitely wanted to find somewhere real to photograph as a starting point. There are a few things that Ridley really wanted to see, huge vistas, big scale and lots of atmospherics. He wanted to show that the place was a really uninviting and desolate landscape, barren of any vegetation, very stormy and lots of lightning going on all the time. We really need to explore all of that visually and that's reflected in the concepts and outlined in the story as well and what we ultimately put into the visual effect shots. That virtual world building process started with a really good interactive session with Ridley at MPC. We actually used a location in Jordan called Wadi Rum as a basis. This is an area that he'd loved so much and he'd actually drawn us a sketch based on an internet photo of, of kind of what he wanted. So we used that as a starting point to build a digital representation of that environment and then placed all the additional elements within it, adjusted the scale and size of each of those until we got the kind of angles that he'd wanted and we had storyboards that he'd given us of the various angles and we'd line up cameras to those uh, and see if we can recreate exactly the same feeling and angles based on our digital environment. Now to get Ridley's vision of the landing site, Ridley came into MPC and worked with our previous artist. Now we used Wadi Rum as a starting point without even visiting there, we worked heavily with satellite images from uh, Google Earth. We bought digital elevation files so that we could extrapolate the, the mountain detail and reconstruct the valley that he liked so much. Google Earth became an important tool for any of our previs and shoot planning. In fact, we were able to do virtual recce of the locations that Ridley wanted us to consider. From the comfort of our own office, we were able to literally fly through the valleys that he was particularly interested in and line up cameras based on those. There were times when Ridley had been on some initial tech scouts with Arthur Max, a production designer, and they came back with some photos of locations they liked, and we were able to use GPS positioning that they'd given given us with their photos and line up to pretty much exactly the same framing within Google Earth of what they'd photographed. So as we got into starting previs, we could actually use those photographs with the real scale references and line those two things up to make the whole process more accurate. And when it actually came to shoot planning for Wadi Rum, we used Google Earth extensively to figure out what kind of altitude we'd need to shoot our passes at, what speed we'd need to shoot at, what lenses. So we were able to create a, a sort of a very detailed pack of information so that when we went there, we had a, a very specific list of the reference passes we need to shoot with all the uh, detailed information of how to shoot it. Wadi Rum wasn't the easiest place to access and it was felt that we were probably unlikely that we'd ever take a full shooting crew there. As a result, we were gonna have to create uh, a digital representation of that. We felt that if we could capture a certain amount of Wadi Rum for real, then we could use that as a basis for our digital construction that we were going to do. In order to create the planet environment of LV233, we followed two different approaches due to the nature of the sequences that MPC were handling. The journey through space and the start of the landing sequence were largely unique vistas that were addressed on a shot-by-shot -shot basis using traditional map painting. A typical space shot required the painting of LV-233 in different layers in order for them to be animated with each layer being provided in at least two different lighting conditions in order to simulate the moving shadows and lightning effects. However, the core of the action and the majority of shots are set in the strip between the Prometheus's landing site and the alien dome structures and this environment work was accomplished with a full CG build. During our aerial shoot of Wadi Rum, we had a ground team that captured tiled stills at specific locations at different times of the day, enabling them to assemble several high-res panoramas of up to 64,000 pixels wide, which encompass all the different lighting conditions that were going to be required. These were spherically mapped onto the geometry that was created of the valley walls. For the ground, we decided to extend the actual ground photographed in Iceland with a full CG ground. This was sculpted in the computer and it was then populated with rocks and pinnacles through a script which was taking into account factors like the proximity of rocks to the pinnacles, the distribution of sand and gravel and wind direction to make sure it was looking as natural as possible. We ended up with a 25 million polygon asset enriched with a multitude of high-res textures and displacements that took around 8 hours of frame to render. 
For the engineer's dome and surrounding walls, Ridley wanted them to feel eroded enough to give a sense of ambiguity as to whether they were an alien creation or a natural formation. So we sampled some of the amazing textures that we found on the valley walls of Wadi Rum and tried them in various configurations until we got a really nice balance. We approached them by creating some very high res models and displacements and multiple textures which work really well on most of our shots, however for the most close up shots the environments team decided to push the look even further through a traditional 3D matte painting approach, creating two lighting conditions for every painting in order to be able to simulate the movement of cloud shadows over the surfaces. When we were shooting in Iceland with the actors, wherever possible we would reference previews of what the landscape was going to be, any digital elements that were going to be in the shot, like the spaceships. We tried to have a reference available of that, and wherever possible we would mark out some of the larger elements in the actual landscape. So, for instance, the silo where the juggernaut rises out of, we'd mark out a huge circle where that would be and use that as a reference for the camera operators to shoot with. We would often talk about what was the correct scale for, say, the juggernaut rolling behind Vickers and Shaw, or the size of the pyramid dome in the background, and things like that. And he'd often just draw what he would rather see rather than what would be technically correct. He'd often just say it's not always about rulers and set squares, but actually how the shot feels. <laughs>